Okay, so the, the, the last part is asking us to, um, to find the probability that we would complete our project in 30 weeks. Like we said, this has to do with an issue of um, uh, probabilities. And we said we, use, we would have to convert this into standard form where we say our D to our expected time. So here, all over our standard deviation. And so like I said, we, we compute our standard deviation using the variance. And so for each activity, you wouldn't compute the variance for all the activities. All you need to do is to compute the variance for the critical activities. For these two values here, the D and then the, the expected time, this D here is the same as the 30 weeks, which is, this in quantitative method, we'll say this is the, the, the sample mean. And then our expected time here is the same as the project completion time. Okay, so the project completion time. Please don't forget this one, project completion. So project completion time, which in our case was 22 weeks. So the only thing we don't have now is the is our variance. Oh, sorry, the standard deviation. And so all we're just going to do is, you know, you do, this is the formula to find the variance. We stated that B minus A all over 6 all squared. So you just have to go for, our critical activity was, um, I think it was B, E, I, B, E, I, and K. So for these activities, just go back to the initial um, table. So let's go back, take the slides back, the initial question. And so you just compute your variance for each of these activities. So I'll do for just maybe one or two. For activity B, its B value is 9, and its A value is 3. I divide it and I square it. This will give me a certain value. Then if I have, so this is for B. So if I, for activity E, again, its B value is 4, right? And then its A value is 2. I do this, I divide by 6, then I square it. So you just do this, do for I and then K. And whatever these values give you, we sum them and that will give us our total variance. And then when we sum the total variance and we take the square root of our total variance, you end up having um, our this thing. So this, this is obviously one. This is going to be 0 0.111 recurring. If you do for K, if you do for I, you will get 0 0.444. And if you also do it for K, you should get 4.00. And so you add this one plus uh, 0 0.111 plus 0 0.444 and 4.0. And that will give us a total of, uh, so we have our total variance of 5.555. If you want your standard deviation, then we're only going to take the square root of this 5.555, okay? And what this is going to give us would be 2.357. That's it. You're done. So now you have everything you need for your to find our z score. So our z score. So here we're only going. It's going to look like this: 30 minus 22, all over 2.357, and this is going to give us 3.39. Okay. Now what I really want us to consider here. Okay, is what the question is asking. In fact, in reading the normal distribution table, what you really need is not necessarily the z-score. The z-score is a pointer to where to look for. But sincerely, what you should be more interested in should be which area of the curve are you interested in. Because, you know, there the, are the quite a number of, of the, the, the distributions that will be given you. You could have one that looks like this with the bigger shaded portion. 
you could have another one also that looks like this we have a small shaded portion and i'm pretty sure we can we can all remember this this one you notice that the values under it are in negative as in the z values will be in negative well, but probably these are positive though and this one so the values are all positive so all the z values are positive in that order so you need to understand which area i am interested in so this is what i advise when you are uh, drawing this now so first i'm going to do it in two instances so normally if i'm ignoring introducing the standard normal distribution what this means is that my mean is 22 weeks and the question is asking me to what, what is the probability that i can finish in 30 weeks so it means that i am interested in this entire area isn't it it says by 30 weeks by 30 weeks means that from zero to what 30 i hope you get the point so this is the area of interest to us now you can't get 30 and 22 on the standard normal distribution table that is why we've converted this into standard normal distribution and so this same information here could be represented as this for a standard normal distribution the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one and so here my mean here becomes zero so, okay so this is the same as this one here hypothetically well yeah and then the 30 here becomes our z score what we've we've converted this one into the z score which is uh 3.39 so where do we find 3.39 i think 3.39 will fall to the right hand side of zero and so this is 3.39 any point to this and so which area is of interest to us we say by 30 weeks so again it's still this same shaded portion this is interest to us so once you have this depending on which of the tables which of the graphs that you have you can easily read it okay so let's go back a little if your graph looks like this what this is saying is that what this shaded portion is saying is i have all the probabilities for any value you want from here backward but if you're interested in anything here i don't have it so you may have to augment your computation to find this one this one would also say that well i have the probabilities for just this one i do not have for this whole area or what in, in other sense what this is saying is that this time around i have for this one but i don't have for this one okay so depending on the on on the graph you have you can you can do it so if my if my if my distribution or my table looks like this then if i'm also interested in this one then whatever i read is the exact probability but if i have this one then whatever i read would not be the exact probability but i can take whatever the probability of 3.39 is from here and then subtract it from one and then i can get the probability for this one it's just that easy the same thing we did in quantitative methods in business mathematics so i am pretty sure that we we are we are fine okay so in my case when when we, and and the good thing is whichever of the tables you use whether it's the one with the negative values or the one with the positive values or the one even that has the distribution in between uh these two points you still get the same answer all you just need to know is understand or know what distribution you have know which area is of interest to you and then read your probability your z-score accordingly okay so when uh we when i when we did it the the answer for the probability that will finish in 30 weeks or less or by 30 weeks is 0 0.9995 and i think this makes sense isn't it because from our computation our best guess was 22 weeks okay so chances are that we are estimating that we will finish by 22 weeks so if we are expected to finish uh if the question is asking us what is the probability that we'll finish by 30 weeks then the probability of finishing by 30 weeks should be very high and obviously it is uh this is like 99.95 percent that will finish this project in, by, by 30 weeks or maybe 30 weeks or less okay so i i hope this was inciting enough the only difference between the 
project evaluation review technique or the PRT and then the CPM technique is that the CPM is deterministic and then the PRT is probabilistic. And this is the probabilistic aspect of the PRT, the only portion we don't see in the CPM. But in getting your critical path, doing your forward pass, your backward pass, finding the floats or the slacks, the procedure is the same for both the CPM and then the PRT. Okay, I hope uh, the session was insightful enough. Thank you.